Hey guys, it's John. You're on the JRB Tree Climbing Channel. This is my first video on SRT beside the introduction. So you're on a new playlist. SRT, single rope technique. Please see the prior video. So this is a specific scenario. It's a conventional scenario. It's a throw ball scenario where I put a throw ball up and over a secure tr tree crotch. And I am going to be climbing it on an SRT system that's non-mechanical in nature. What do I mean by non-mechanical? I mean no complex friction devices. A carabiner I do not consider to be a mechanical device. Of course it is. I'm just going with industry nomenclature that a carabiner is a typical device. What I mean by non-mechanical is we're not using any of the devices that you're familiar with for ascent and repel. I will be using friction hitches and carabiners. My system is over my shoulder. Now, of course, you could bunch that up and stick it in a pouch, and it's quite small. And I built this one intentionally for demonstration purposes. It's not that big. It is only 25 feet of 11 millimeter ghillie rope. And in orange, and I might not use orange for a real system, but just so you can see it, I have a retrieval line which is the same length. It's also 25 feet. So as I take the system apart, I'm going to show you the parts of it. Okay, now before I show you my system, I think it's always important to show prior art. And so this system is one I purchased several years ago from a fellow saddle hunter. I am not aware of who fabricated this. If you are, please leave a link in the video description. I used it for quite a while doing SRT climbs. It's con it consists of a length of quality rope, about 35 feet, and allows us to climb around 30 feet. On the one end, it's got a very sleek end loop. Got to like that, very similar to my JRB end loop, but I, I, I suspect it's even better in terms of getting through things. And here, we have a spliced eye with a rappel ring. So I bought the system used. I talked to an arborist about how, how I would rig this, and he explained, well, it's, it's pretty simple. I guess I could have figured this out, but we just tie our power cord or throw ball to the sleek end of the system. We send it up. And when we get to the point where the ring is going to disappear on us, we pass, we pass the power cord or throw ball through, and then we continue to pull it. And, we, and when we get to that point, now I'm simulating as if this were high up over my head, where we get to the point where these are about to pass through, we just give a little tug and the whole thing should go through. And it usually does, but sometimes I got hung up there and that was frustrating when it didn't always go through. But in, in any event, we continue to send that up into the canopy. And mindful that we don't lose the other ends of our power cord, which are here in my left hand, we, we affix our device here and climb. But here's the issue. I would like to avoid having to tie anything. I'd like to have my friction hitch already here. But obviously, if I had a friction hitch here, it wouldn't pass through the rappel ring. And so how can we accomplish that? And that's what I'm about to show you. Okay, I'm going to take you through the system. This is the far end where I've got a miniature carabiner used for rigging only onto my retrieval line. You follow the other 25 feet of that, and this of course is removable. I can remove this, but I tend to leave it on. This is the other end of my retrieval line, and that's going onto one of my JRB end loops. This is version two of my end loop, which goes right through the end of the rope. See my prior video on that. This knot here is a Scott's locked bowlin. I have a dedicated video on that. And as I formed it in the video, the Scott's locked bowline was in this configuration. All I did with a small cable tie is arrange the cable tie such that if I am putting the rope up in the tree in this fashion, I want that cable tie to help ensure that when I pull on this line, the loop is roughly horizontal. 
and it, it seems to work well both ways. Although I tend to adopt a uniform method. You'll recall I call that the nose of the Scotts Bolin. I insert my throw line or rigging line through here. So that's how I rig it up in the tree. This will become my canopy anchor. Let's get a closer look at that Scotts Lock Bolin. This is exactly the way it finishes as I demonstrated in the tying video where the standing end is on the left and the tail is on the right. Well, I want this tail to be right underneath the standing end. And so just to make sure that that's always the case, I just take a cable tie and put it through here and then capture it right there. And I don't make it real tight, just tight enough so it's in alignment. And what that does is make sure that this will always be horizontal, no matter how I'm orienting it. Let's go to the other end of the system. So the other end of the system, I have a friction hitch. This is my primary point of attachment. This is the JRB Ascender 523 tied in soft bridge mode. And instead of a hunter's bend, I've terminated it in a sliding double fisherman's knot. Dedicated video here, dedicated video here. Why did I go with the sliding double fisherman's? Well, because it, those tails aren't sticking out left and right, and it makes it easier to rig. And you'll see that in a moment. And what's at the bottom of the system? Another JRB end loop. All right, I want to prepare it for ascent. And what I do is I take my friction hitch to the end of the line and I capture the friction hitch. And I want these to be the same length. And then I grab, now this could be a, a paracord preset. In this case, it is my actual throw, throw line and I secure it. Okay, now we're ready to send the system up. So this is the side that's gonna go up and that's gonna go over the tree crotch. And of course, that's not gonna go through the narrowest tree crotch in the world, but a properly shaped tree crotch with maybe a 60 degree angle, th that's perfect. That's gonna go through every time. So how do we start rigging? Well, I take my Scott's Lock Bolin. That's the side with the nose. I've been adopting a convention. Or I'm gonna take the other end of my throw line, or in this case, my throw ball, and drop it through. And now I'm gonna start pulling on that. And watch what happens here, right? The rope's gonna start going up into the tree. Now you can just stay here with me. You can stay with me. You, you can picture that thing hopping over the tree crotch. That's no problem. Let's just watch what I'm doing. I'd normally be standing, right? I wouldn't be on my knees. But right now I feel a tiny bit of resistance. That means it's near, it's near, it's touching the tree crotch. And so I, I'm never gentle. Let's just give that a little tug. It pops right over. Now let's keep watching the action. This where the this is where the magic happens, right here. So in my haste, I got this misoriented. Let's get this correct. As I pull down, this is not only my retrieval line, it's my control line. It allows me to control the position of the Scots Bowen. If it were down, I could pull on this and it goes horizontal. Now, this rope is 25 feet. The rope was built with 25 feet. I believe the crotch is probably around 21 feet. That's my estimate. Now, here's the only precarious part of the rig. We've got to get that through and you can see that's quite easy for me to do if i can see it you see that we, we do this on both putting the hitch up and taking it down that's the only precarious part of the operation so if you're trying to do this in the dark you would need a headlamp to make sure that that happens so this this rigging is non-trivial but that's one of the side effects, I should say, of not having to tie any friction hitches. If we were okay with tying a friction hitch, well, this rigging would be a lot easier. We wouldn't have to fit that through, but you get the idea. So I'm gonna go ahead and send this up into the canopy now. And, and now that I'm here at this point, no sense in, in backtracking, I'm going to remove the friction hitch from this location because I need that, I'll be climbing on it. It is my primary point of attachment. 
ordinarily in a hunting situation, I'd remove my repel, my uh, throw ball, but I'll, I'll leave it there for this demonstration. And now it's ready to go. So again, let's review the system. It's got three parts as per my prior video. The anchor is a canopy anchor. It is a running Scots locked bowline. My primary point of attachment is the 523 JRB Ascender in soft bridge mode. Let's clip into that with my primary bridge. You guys know I like a redundant bridge. And let's size it appropriately. And my means of advancement, propulsion, call it what you like, is the same JRB guard a hitch foot loop that you see me climb with in double rope technique. And yes, I could probably use larger carabiners for such a thick rope. It's a little bit more effort with a thick rope. It's a little bit more effort with a stiff rope. But, you know, we're strong boys and girls. We can handle it. And this is really important. And you don't see this with, with other SRT systems. If my friction hitch were to fail completely, if something happened with my primary friction device, the JRB Ascender, I've got a redundant point of connection to the rope and I can recover. I can recover from that. So now let's step in and execute the climb. Sit in the system. And now you may be looking at my back and you may be looking at my side. I'll start the climb as if I couldn't put a foot on the tree. If I couldn't put a foot on the tree because it was leaning, that's really no problem. And this is a bit easier with this SRT than it is with my JRB doubled rope because, uh, or DSRT, because I have to shove both up at the same time. With this SRT, I can stand and then shove the hitch up. It's a little bit easier. So, so I concede that, um, that that is the case. It's easier to master, less technique. But typically, we do have a place to put our foot, and I use it for positioning. So I'm just going to scoot on up there. Just a little voiceover from the studio. You're asking yourself, who is this system for? I've been talking for three years about how my DSRT system has advantages in situations like these, and I remain of that opinion. The system is for individuals who have two criteria. Number one, they do not want to tie any life-sustaining knots at the tree whatsoever. And number two, they can't master or they're physically incapable or their body shape is not conducive towards the rising move in DSRT, whereby the rising move here is easier. The only trade-off is that the rigging you just saw is a little more complex. Okay, so here I am at height. I would be on my platform. I tend to leave my foot loop attached. If you decide to remove your foot loop, you should engage your munter. We always want two points of attachment to the rope. So I will now simulate the end of my hunt. During my hunt, I may have removed this line, right? It's a simply simple clip of the carabiner to remove it. But as I'm ready to come down, I will take off the Garda. You can leave that on your bridge or take it off. I'll keep things as neat as possible. If I were to drop that, no problem. I don't need it anymore. I'll now be forming a Munter friction hitch on my redundant bridge. And you guys are aware of how to do this because it's been my most popular video, single rope repel on the Munzer friction hitch. Different variants to get you the right amount of friction for your body weight and rope characteristics. And now, a critical point in the climb, you can't do this with many friction hitches. With one hand, I'm going to break that 523 JRB ascender with all of my body weight, 8 millimeter cord on 11 millimeter rope. And by the way, I just did this with close to 300 pounds. It's quite doable and with one hand. So once I broke that, I'm holding tension on this line here. But if I were to just come down a little bit, the friction hitch rebinds. We gotta remember, we climb in all kinds of crazy conditions. Your fingers might be cold. You always wanna repel really slowly. And what I do is I try to ensure I'm not balancing the load on my two hands, 
I have the majority load with my left hand, and my right hand is simply tending that friction hitch. And we have to train ourselves that if something were to go wrong, we let go. That's hard to do. I've never had to do it, but I've demonstrated it many times. Let's demonstrate it right now. It's hard to do that, and I don't recommend you do it um, unless you're close to the ground. I'm quite experienced in this, and so uh, please take that to heart. Let's break it again. You know, I may have stopped to uh, remove my platform. Whenever we're working with friction hitches, we don't, we don't like to test them like that. Uh, for example, when I ascend, I always let go of the friction hitch slowly and make sure it, it binds because it's easy to get a friction hitch like the JRB Ascender to bind by simply grabbing on the, on the upper helix. And we can always tune the friction hitch. They're, they're, uh, they're tunable devices. All right, I'm down at the bottom. And we're now going to retrieve the system. I unclip from it. Let's get this all set up for cleanup. I'm going to clip this back in so it's ready to rig the next time, right? We might, we might be climbing the next time in darkness. Let's, let's just get everything all tidied up. Now, I'm going to pull on this. And what's going to happen? Well, it's going to pull that Scott's locked bowling down. Okay. Now, because I'm using rather stiff rope, that that uh, Scott's lock bowling is in kind of a, a not very oval shape. And so at this point, I'll, I'll just shake this a little bit. I'm not making any noise, but I'm just kind of whipping that thing open a little bit because I need to pass a friction hitch through it. And if I hadn't secured my friction hitch to the end of the line, well, it could get caught right here. But notice this point, this point of intersection is typically not too far from me. Now, if you built one of these systems that was 100 feet of rope, well, yeah, it'd be further up in the tree. But you get the idea. We just need to thread that through there, and it's really not that difficult. You can tune your system with the size of your Scott's Lock Bowling to make it easier. I generally look for about the size of size of my fist, or you know, maybe the size of a grapefruit. But I don't I don't need it any bigger than that. And then I'll just keep on pulling. And so recall that my throw ball went through that. Let's go ahead and get rid of that and pull this down. Now, if I wanted to return to this tree, of course I wouldn't be putting up the throw ball. I'd be putting up a piece of paracord. That's, that's not rocket science. That's how we could do a run and gun scenario and go into a tree uh, once with a throw ball if we wanted to return to it at another time. And now all that's left to do is to, uh, is to ravel up the system. And again, there's plenty of ways to do this, but I'll just show you my method. It's a butterfly coil. So I'll take my, my hands through the apparatus and then I will make an alternating left, right. So this ensures I'm not putting any spin in the rope. When I get to the Scott's lock bowling, I put that in my hand and then I keep going keep going with the retrieval cord. Yeah, sure, you could remove it. I just don't, I don't see any point. It's, it's easy. It's easy. So when I got about this much left, you know, it depends exactly how much you have, I will wrap it around at least three, four times. And this one might require just a couple more. And then I put a bite through. And look, I've got the whole thing raveled up, and that, that's really stable. This could be shorter, it could be longer. I'm not going to fine tune it. I wear it over my shoulder, I clip my, and, I, and I'm good to go. Okay, so that was scenario one. It's a specific system with more rope, and I will be showing you how to build a system with more rope. Rope gives us flexibility. There are certain scenarios that we're going to get into whereby uh, we don't have, and I learned this from you. You guys are learning from me. I'm learning from you. A lot of my, my friends in the south are like, Johnny, we don't have these, these nice oak trees with these majestic crotches right where you need them. We've got these ugly pine trees with dead stubs for 50 feet. What am I supposed to do? We'll get into that. But the bottom line is they want to 
and, and, and rightly so, capture the trunk. We're going to do some content on that. Again, there are a hundred different combinations of SRT systems that I can show you that are non-mechanical in nature. I'll be showing to you them judiciously. You're not going to see every single one. You're going to see specific uh, systems and ways to, for a system to transform into your specific needs. As always, I ask that you take things quite seriously. If you try to duplicate anything that I'm doing in the canopy, you understand that you take your life in your hands and you take responsibility for your actions. I'm just trying to help. Thank you, guys.